Today we're going to be going over some budget-friendly men's fragrances that can be worn for pretty much any situation that everybody is going to be guaranteed to love. So we're checking off, I would say, probably all of the boxes here, or at least just about, all of the major important uh, bullet points that people are looking for when purchasing scents, especially maybe more so beginners. These meet all of that criteria. Affordable price, uh, great compliment factor, something that you just don't have to stress about when you're going to wear it. You just kind of throw it on whenever you feel like wearing it. And that's kind of what these do here. Also, a lot of these also have pretty good performance. That's kind of another one that isn't prioritized in this video, but quite a few of these do meet that expectation. So if you just want to play it safe, you have a budget that you're trying to stick to, you just want to smell good, these are going to be it for you. And I like doing these videos periodically and tossing some different things in each time just because I think this is very helpful, especially when you're a beginner and you're feeling overwhelmed with all of the options out there. Now the only way these will be affordable is if you buy them through discounters, I'll link them down below. Always shop through discounters, it's going to be the best way to save the most amount of money. And when you're saving money, you can just buy more fragrances versus if you're buying them at retail, so that's very important. Okay, let's get things kicked off with Amber Oud Exclusive Blue. And this is going to be a clone. We got a couple clones in this video. We're starting it off with this one. This is a clone of Parfums de Marly Leighton, which is one of the most popular from Parfums de Marly for sure. It's kind of the one that was really building up that initial hype for the brand. Niche brand, you know, that one's is around $200 usually on discounters. Retails for a bit more than that, maybe $350. So it's expensive, even on discounters. This is one that you can get for considerably less, $50 to $60, which isn't necessarily cheapy. It's kind of right there in the mid-range, but in comparison to the real one, it's uh, considerably more affordable. And this DNA is fantastic. It's very sweet with the vanilla, the apple, but there's also lavender freshness. And so I find that while Leighton and, and things that smell similar to it like this go in the sweeter direction, it's not to the point where it's going to be super challenging. It's not like a Mancera red tobacco or even quite to the level of like a Spice Bomb Extreme or something like that. You know, there there's some balanced freshness, there's some fruitiness. I don't think that this one is too awfully challenging to pull off. And especially if you're gonna be wearing it indoors most of the time, you could wear something like this year round. And look, think all the way back to some of the most popular men's designer fragrances ever. You know, one million, Eros, those are very sweet. Guys are wearing them left and right throughout the summertime, and they were working. They are best sellers, so don't sweat it too much. You can grab into this DNA, and you'll be able to wear it for a lot of things. You're gonna smell amazing, and because this is cloning something much more expensive, you're not gonna smell this nearly as often. Generally, only us fragrance um, enthusiasts or people who are interested in this hobby will know about the clones, and so, this is kind of our little secret here. Next up, we have Mont Blanc Legend Night. So this is a nice $35 to $40 scent here, vanilla, apple, and lavender. You can grab these as a tester, just like this, and they come with a cap. So there's your sticker on the back, they give you notes, they give you, you know, tester information, but they come with a cap. Nice way to save a couple extra bucks for basically the same thing. And this is just a pretty cookie cutter release. There's nothing exciting about this one, you know? A little bit of a sweet apple, fresh lavender, vanilla, all of that stuff. You know, the notes actually sound a little bit similar to how I described Leighton. However, they're completely different. And so that's interesting. And that's something where when you're new and you're just looking at notes and comparing things that way and that's it, it can get very confusing and misleading. This smells nothing like Leighton. Leighton is uh, a bit more interesting and things of that nature are a bit more interesting this one is kind of the Mont Blanc legend DNA, some of that freshness with a little bit of a sweet touch and a little bit of a nighttime feel, so it makes sense. Uh, it has decent performance, not a complete beast mode scent though, but for the price, this is one you can pull off and smell great. Next up we have Hugo Boss Selection. So this is uh, one of my favorite affordable ones. You got pink pepper, musk, and orange here in this one. And you don't hear about it that often. That's why I like it. This is the type of thing that has gone under the radar, at least here in the community, and I would assume probably outside of the community as well. It's not something that you're going to see at retailers all over the place, sitting on shelves. You know, it's way past that. It's not something that you're going to see ranked super high on like the best sellers on discounters, which is 
how you can get a lot of exposure to something. You know, if you look and everything is on the bestsellers page, you can just, you see it all the time. This isn't there. It's kind of a little bit more hidden. And I think that's what makes it interesting, especially when you consider how solid this one is. It's one of a kind in the sense that there's nothing else out there that smells like this, very similar to it. That being said, it's not something that is mind-blowing and completely different. It's fresh, it's a little bit spicy, it's a little bit clean, right? But nothing out of the ordinary, but also nothing that's overly similar either in the sense of being a clone or anything like that. And so because of that, this is the type of thing that you can wear and you're going to smell different because a lot of people out there have no idea this is even a thing. And when you can get this one for, I want to say, in the... Uh, Upper 20 to lower $30 range, somewhere in there. They have a few different bottle sizes available and testers and that sort of thing. Somewhere around in that range, it is a great purchase. This is super versatile. Carolina Herrera Chic is up next. So it's got watermelon, pepper, and cinnamon. Interesting. So I've kind of described this one as a more grown-up version of Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct. Now, First Instinct, I love. I think it's a great scent. The reason why that comparison comes about is the melon and the watermelon in this case, the melon and first instinct, and some of the pepper, some of the woods, both of them share that as well. And they are similar, to be fair. There are some definite similarities, but there are also some differences being that this one, Chic, is simply, like I just mentioned, a little bit more classy. Uh, the cinnamon is giving it a little bit more of a warm spice rather than just a peppery nature, just in Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct. So there's differences there. Uh, First Instinct is one that is polarizing because of that playfulness and that kind of young smell that it gives off. So a lot of guys aren't into it. This one, again, is a little bit more grown up, a little bit more mature. And I would say in one way or another, maybe a little bit more likable just because you're kind of, you know, uh, catering to a wider age range, both for the wearer and the people around you. And another one that's affordable, you know, I think this is $40 or so on discounters. Uh, the presentation is as basic and bare as you can possibly get and maybe borderline a little bit cheap feeling. The cap is just thin, you know, cheap plastic. The bottle is just glass. I mean, there's nothing special about this. They keep the cost down in that area and they give you something that works great for a lot of situations. So can't really complain too much. Let's go ahead and knock out another clone. I said I was featuring two. This is the second one. It is FOMO, a Fraghead's Asylum, coming in at an extreme concentration. Pure parfum. This thing is strong. And so, you know, you might look at this and you see a very familiar color of blue. And you might be wondering, what is it? Well, it is a clone of Roja Parfums Elysium. And I love to see it because Elysium is one of my favorite niche fragrances. You can go all the way back on my channel. I've been talking about that stuff and loving it and wearing it for years at this point. I've got multiple bottles of it sitting up there in both concentrations, the Parfum Cologne and the Parfum. Love the stuff. I've worn through a ton of it, especially in the summertime. That's my go-to, but the DNA works all year around. And when you're looking at prices online, you're into the several hundreds of dollars for it in both concentrations. It depends on what you're getting hundreds of dollars, no matter what way, uh, this is 30. So big difference here. And there aren't too many Elysium clones on the market, which is another reason why I'm so excited about this because it's filling a void. When you look around, there are just, uh, you know, probably at this point, hundreds of Aventus clones, really probably pretty close to it. So many, uh, you've got a bunch of Sauvage clones at this point, Blue to Chanel clones, I can't think of a Dylan Blue clone, but there are a few clones that mash up Dylan Blue and some other blue scents, but you get the idea. A lot of the blues have been cloned and worked to death at this point, but not Elysium. Now, this is a fantastic representation. It is so close. The quality is impressive, to say the least. And this is Fragrance Buy's brand. I knew about this for a little while now, just kind of talking back and forth with them. And they've been doing such a good job over there in terms of just providing discounts and everything. I knew these were going to be good. But I'm going to be honest, I didn't think they were going to be this good. They also have a Dior Homme Parfum clone as well and uh, uh, MFK Grand Soir clone. All amazing. And they're all right around the $30 price point. Gary's Den, which is the Dior Homme Parfum clones, around $37. 
Still a great price, and Elysium of those three is going to be the most wearable, the most versatile, the biggest complement polar. And remember, we're talking a Parfum Concentration. This stuff is strong. Some of you might even get better performance out of this than Elysium itself. So if you had issues with performance in that category from Elysium, look into this one. At this price point, you cannot go wrong. This DNA works like a charm. Kenneth Cole, Mankind Legacy is up next. This one's got amorous, balsam fir, orange, and cedar wood. Another cheapie here, you know, sticking with the theme right around in the 30s, I believe. Uh, Kenneth Cole is more of a budget-friendly designer brand in terms of their fragrances, that is. I have no idea about their clothing or any other accessories, but in the fragrance world, these are almost always affordable, and uh, if you're paying a lot for a Kenneth Cole scent, you shouldn't be. It's not to say that they're bad, it's just they're readily available on discounters always in the 20 to 30-ish dollar range. Unless it's something that's brand new, but then I would just wait for that to hit discounters. I digress. I like this one. There's also Mankind Hero, which I also have, and it's great. Take your pick. They're both really good. I wanted to feature this one, tossing it in there. Both of them would work. Um, this is kind of the one I went for. There's nothing inherently special about this either, guys. You know, again, that's not what we're going for in this video. We're going for things that have versatility and pull complements that are budget friendly. And that's what this does. In this price range, generally, you're not going to be getting things that are reinventing the wheel, so to speak. But they do work for the intended purpose, which is what I just described. Definitely check this one out. You know, it's the type of thing when you're doing your shopping next time, just toss it in your cart. It's an extra, you know, 30 bucks or whatever it is, you might even forget that you bought it by the time the package shows up. You'll open it up and it'll be a nice little surprise for you. That's pretty solid. Okay, now this next one I will say is a scent that does, I don't want to say reinvent the wheel to use that expression again, but it's something that when it came out, it was doing something different. And even now, there are very few things out there that smell quite like this. It's Dunhill Icon. All about the neroli here. A lot of neroli, you get some other florals going on, some bergamot, some pepper, and in the base, some woods, and if I didn't say it already, a bit of musk and that sort of thing. But it has this very interesting, very unique, and, and just memorable grape soda fizzy opening, which sounds bizarre, but oh man, I'm telling you guys, it is so interesting. And when you smell it, you like understand. Grape soda, it is the craziest thing. And this is the type of scent that I have probably sprayed in the air to smell the opening more than I have actually worn myself because I love that opening. And by far the opening is the best part of this one. And that's not to say that the dry down is bad, but that opening man, that bubbly, fizzy, crispy, neroli kind of grape smell is very unique and something different. And so this is the type of thing that will have you set apart from the crowd and smelling different. You know, even in the dry down, when that fades away, it still kind of stands out among the rest. And I think this stuff is going for like $30 on discounters, kind of the ongoing theme here for price. Somewhere around in there, maybe $35, maybe $40, I don't know. Somewhere within that range, it's under $50, and it's a great, great scent, something unique, something super wearable. People are really going to be interested in this one. Next up, we got one of the most affordable blue fragrances that is in production now, and that isn't a clone. You know, this is um, Versace Dylan Blue. You know, at one point, it was kind of Dylan Blue head to head with uh, Bulgari Aqua Atlantique for the most affordable blue scent. They were just kind of right there. And it was one of those deals where, depending on what the discounter prices were doing, sometimes one would edge out the other. Dylan Blue is almost always 45 to maybe pushing $50 for 100 milliliters. And at the time, Aqua Atlantique was roughly the same, just depends. Sometimes maybe even a bit less, I can't remember for sure. Unfortunately, and this is very sad for me, Atlantique is discontinued and has been for some time. It was one of my favorites. I love that stuff. It's another one where you can go back and look. It's been a favorite of mine, and the only reason I don't talk about it anymore, obviously, is because you can't purchase it anymore, and that wouldn't be really fair. So now Dylan Blue is kind of uh, the king of affordable, standalone blue scents. Not talking clones or anything else, at least from all the big designer brands. Yeah, I guess there's a few other, you know, really cheap, kind of uh, more Calvin Klein level designer brands on discounters that might have a blue scent that's cheaper than this, but this is kind of one of the 
the bigger name releases that is the most affordable. You know, when you're talking your Sauvage, Dylan Blue, and Blue to Chanel lineup, this smokes all of those by a long shot in terms of price. And really, it's great. It is fantastic at this amount of money. The patchouli C notes kind of ambrox in here is heavy, it's sweet, it's rich. There's a good amount going on in this. And some could argue that it might even have a bit more depth and and more just substance than something like Blue to Chanel and Sauvage. It just it is sweeter, and that's kind of where that's coming from. But I love it. I think it's fantastic. I've had this for years. This is my first bottle. It's 100 milliliter. It's down to about here. Ooh, I was really up in your face. I apologize. Wasn't looking at the camera, but here's where it is. I've had it for a long time. I've got a 200 mil as well, just as a backup. I got a good deal on it. I've got another 100 mil out in my car. It just stays out there. I keep it on me all the time. And that's kind of if I ever run out of the house forgetting to put on something, I've got that little 100 mil bottle of Dylan Blue in my vehicle at all times as well. So, you know, I've got my bases covered and this is one that I trust with that. If I do forget something, I'm okay with throwing it on whenever. I love this stuff. Ferragamo Womo Casual Life is, what is it, mid-30s, maybe low-40s. Violet Leaf Coffee and Lemon here. Love it. It's uh, going to be clearly significantly fresher than the original Womo and Womo Signature, but it's not quite as blue fragrancy as Urban Feel, which was the other flanker within this lineup here. So you get a little bit of a roasted coffee, ozonic kind of fresh, um, airy, uh, kind of watery violet leaf. And of course, the lemon, like I mentioned, giving you a little bit of a sour citrus kick. Musk in here, all of that stuff in the base, pretty standard dry down. I would say it's going to be a bit more interesting than Urban Feel. You know, it's uh, again, not as blue fragrance heavy. Urban Feel is all about the Ambroxan, but it might not be as, you know, interesting or as as unique of a wearing experience as something like the original Womo or Womo Signature. This is going to be the fresher one, the easier one to wear of those two, and again, so much more versatility. And because it's not as polarizing in terms of how sweet it is, it might be more mass pleasing, it just depends. You know, Womo and Womo Signature have been, um, you know, working really well for years in terms of compliments, not discrediting those, but the freshness that this one lends it's just, it's much more wearable. And if you can wear it in more situations and wear it more often, it comes down to a numbers game. Then it's probably going to get you more compliments, assuming that you're approachable and you're wearing enough to where people can smell you and all of that other stuff that everybody knows at this point. And we're going to go ahead and finish this one off with Mercedes Benz Infinite Spicy by the master perfumer Olivier Cresp. It's got, uh, oh boy, Sichuan pepper, um, cardamom. There is uh, cashmere in here, I believe, as well. Quite a few spicy notes, and that only makes sense. Oh, juniper berries as well. I'm missing that one. Great stuff. Fantastic. You know, you kind of, or at least going into this one, I was thinking, okay, it's a spicy scent. What can be interesting about it? But there's something really unique about this one that I haven't smelled anywhere else. You know, the cardamom, all the peppers and everything like that, it's it's used often in fragrances, but nothing quite like this. And so again, you've got to take into consideration it is true to its name, it is a spicy scent, and it does not hold back. And because of that, it has more of a mature and kind of grown up masculine smell to it. So it's something that is going to be different, but um, not quite as mainstream in terms of all of the sweet men scents. Really nice change of pace. But it's still something that has a lot of freshness, a lot of versatility. It's easy to pull off. It's affordable. I think $37 or so. Definitely worth checking out. Alrighty, guys. There you go. Some budget-friendly, affordable designer scents that you can wear for anything that people are going to absolutely love. I'll link them down below and uh, jump on my mailing list and texting list. Just go ahead and do it right now at the link and number down below. Now through the end of the year, there's going to be some amazing deals, amazing sales, amazing rare fragrance restocks coming up. This is the time of year to buy. Every time around fourth quarter, end of third quarter, things get crazy, big sales, big deals, all of that amazingness starts coming into play. And so you'll be the first to know if you're on those lists. I'm talking stuff like all of the rarities, your Dior on Parfum, Lanoui Blue Electrique, and all the sales to go along with it. 
Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.